Remember we said that TCP is connection-oriented. In order for being a connection-oriented protocol, TCP needs to establish, maintain, and tear down the connection. For connection establishment, which is the first phase, the sender and receiver should agree to have a connection. They should agree they want to communicate, that the communication needs a connection, and they also need to agree on the parameters of the connection, like sequence numbers for each side of the connection and receiver buffer size at each side. TCP uses a handshake process to establish the connection. There are different ways to do a handshake. Before discussing TCP handshake for connection establishment, we are going to learn about two-way and three-way handshakes. First, the two-way handshake which is the exchange of two messages to establish a connection. The two messages are the request for the connection and the acceptance message. Like in a human example saying, let's talk, and the other side accepting with saying, okay. In end systems, that could be request connection X and accept connection X. But the question is, would a two-way handshake work well in the network with variable delays, retransmissions, out-of-order messages, and generally with two sides of the communication not being fully aware of the state of the other side? To answer this, let's examine a few scenarios. Let's consider a client sending a request for a connection to a server. The server accepts the connection request. So we want to find out if the connection is always established and the task is done and all is well. What if, before the connection acknowledgement reaches the client, the request times out and the client sends another request? While the first connection is established and complete, the second request yields a dangling half-open connection which is connected at the server side, but has no client. That is a failure. In a second scenario, while the connection is established and in progress, the same delayed retransmit of the initial request for the same connection reaches the server and establishes a half open connection. Even worse, the data retransmit from the client for the initial communication could now be considered data for the second dangling connection. That is also a failure. So two-way handshake is inefficient given the delays, retransmissions, and complexities of an unreliable underlying network channel. Now, the question is, how do we solve the problems we saw with the two-way handshake given the complexities introduced by the communication network. An acceptable solution, which is also employed by TCP, is a three-way handshake. In three-way handshake, both sides should acknowledge the connection. This means the original requester of the connection should also confirm the receipt of acknowledgement and final establishment of the connection. Let's review this with TCP handshake process, which uses setting of sin bit in the TCP header for connection establishment. The client chooses a sequence number to start, sets the segment sin bit to one, and sends the segment. At this stage, the client is at the sin sent state. The server receives this request sets the X sequence number to X plus one according to sequence number X announced by the client and chooses sequence number Y for its side of the byte stream. It also sets the SYN and ACK bits, which will signal that this is a connection acknowledgement segment. Server will send the segment and enter SYN received state. The client will receive the segment, set acknowledgement number to Y plus one, set ACK bit, and send the third segment. 
the connection at the client side is considered established at the send event of the third segment and at the sender side at the receive event. Of it. We can illustrate the three-way handshake process for connection establishment of TCP using an FSM. This FSM is for both client and server sites for TCP three-way handshake process. First, the server side. The server will go from closed state to listen state when it is accepting connections from clients. With receipt of a SIN and setting the sequence number and ACK number according to the received request and sending a response segment, it will enter the SIN received state, from which the receipt of the final ACK will take it to the established state. The client, which is usually in a closed state if it does not have a connection, will initiate the request with SYN segment and entering the SYN state. It will transition to established connection state with event of receipt of the SYN ACK from the server. 